Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day to the fathers amongst us. And um, congratulations for all the footballers whose teams won. Commiserations to all those that didn't. <laughs> Welcome to everyone online. Uh, everyone, obviously everyone in the present building, thank you. Remember, if you're online, then your video's on, which is gonna be good for later because later today, we will want you to have your video on and we're recording our services per usual. Um, today, as we gather in this place, we welcome and give thanks to God for the Wurundjeri people. We, we recognize the, the continuing contribution that the Wurundjeri people make to the life of Australia and pray that we can work together to leave a legacy of reconciliation, justice and hope for all Australians. This morning, I'm going to um, start our service and ask you, invite you to say with me our church vision statement as a reminder of why we gather together so let's say it together. Through our commitment to Christ, we aspire to a deeper connection with God, each other, and those around us. We care for our local community, invite people to faith, and grow together in God. Let me pray. Loving God, as we come together, we just give you praises and thanks that you have invited us to be part of this community and that your spirit is here with us. And that out of the love of your spirit and the love that you give to us, that we get to love and be loved by those around us. And Lord, we just don't take that for granted. <laughs> we just thank you for the family and friendships that we have here. And Lord, we pray as our statement says, Lord, that you will help us be inviters to others to be in that faith, to become to faith, to come to know you, to invite others to be part of this community of love that we have together. And so Lord, um, as we gather today, we again invite your spirit to be present with us, uniting us around you. In this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite Jonathan down to lead us um, and Nova into some singing. And I invite you all to stand. Good morning, everyone. We're going to sing out God is Greater and some language in this song that's kind of like battle language. And I'd invite you to think about in your life, what is God greater than? What are the battles you're facing? And remember that God is greater. <laughs>
into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you. Not like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Touch 
Washing every heart, I worship you. I believe you got someone to interview. You can bring them up. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everybody. This morning, I would like to welcome Lynn to the front to be interviewed. Morning. Uh, okay, Lynn, um, tell us a bit about yourself. Well, my name is Leonard, known as Lynn. I went to Duffy Street School, then to Collingwood Technical School, I'm qualified in the shoe trade, clicker, pattern cutter and designer. I'm one of a family of eight, married 65 years. Um, We're cheering for Nile, then. I know, I know, I know. And she's looking to. <laughs> And uh, family, uh, two children. We lost one, unfortunately, in a car accident at 22. We have a beautiful daughter, uh, Marie, and two lovely grandchildren. One is 20, 27, and the other one's 23. So that's, that's my. Okay, so tell us your favourite colour and your favourite animal. Oh, well, my favourite colour, I really haven't got a great favourite colour. I like autumn colours. I love to see the leaves changing colours and, and then I look forward to the spring when they spring up again and all the new growth comes. So that's my colour part. Your animal? Your animal. Oh, animal. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, well, I'd like to get a, have a greyhound, but unfortunately we haven't been able to do that yet because we've adopted so many animals over the years. Uh, three dogs and two cats, and we've still got a cat now, but if the cat gets in the ancient years, we might be able to manage a greyhound to go with it. I don't know. I'm not sure. But that, that's, less, uh, that's something that can't make me coming. Okay. Um, there's another one. Uh, you tell me. Oh, this, this yes, one, the this, words that describe this. Jesus, this this one right. here. This one here is. Thank you. Uh, what, um, I love gardening. I love art and um, music as well. I, I, I love music and um, and also I love coming to church. I do. And are there specific words that describe Jesus to you? For you? Well, um, well. 
as far as it goes, I, I describe Jesus as, as having hope and peace. And I, you know, look forward, you know, that, that's, that's my description of Jesus and follow Jesus as well. And is there anything that we can pray for you for? Well, um, a strength to continue and care for people and to pray for peace on earth. That's the main thing. Let us pray. Thanks, Lee. Um, Father, we, we uh, uphold this faithful man to you this morning. Uh, we thank you for his presence here amongst us uh, and for his continued service to you through all of the years of his life. Um, Father, we pray for his strength and resilience and perseverance. We pray that there will be many more years of marriage between Nola and Lynn, and uh, we, we pray for his desire for peace on earth. Your will be done. In Father's name. Amen. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. And, and Lynn gets to interview somebody next week. Cool. Um, well, today, obviously, we're going to get down to doing some work around and goals for the church. But before we do, I just wanted us to have a bit of a theological time thinking reflection first and I've got a selection of scriptures from Proverbs, Psalms and Jeremiah and as I read them I want to see if you can pick the theme. Many are the plans in a person's heart but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So what do you think the theme of those readings might be? Who said that? Plans. Yes, yes, definitely plans. But look deeper. What's some of the nuances around plans? What, what else do you see there? The Lord... The Lord is in the midst of those plans. So, and what was the last bit? And he's in control. Yeah. What else can you see? Lots of purpose in the plans. Yeah. Not our plans, but his will. Yep. Thanks. Say that again, bomb big voice. You're more likely to have success with your plans if the Lord agrees with them. Yep. Okay, thank you. As we come to the next step of the plan for our church, I wanted to remind you of some of the key points. And firstly, plans are good. And as you can see from the scriptures, they speak explicitly about plans. When when I was preparing this, I actually did, you know, you know, jump onto Bible Gateway and you say search plans and the amount of scriptures that came up, like this is only a fraction of them. Plans are good. And when you look at the Bible, 
you actually see plans, God's plans, or plans of people being worked out all the time through the scriptures. There seems to be God's plans for creation, and you see at the beginning of Genesis, you see God's plans for recreation in terms of recreating his people that went into slavery into Egypt and God's plan to rescue them. God's plans of salvation. God's plans for Jesus to come into the world and bring redemption, salvation, restoration. Plans are good. Secondly, God expects us as human beings created in his image to have plans. We're wired that way, to be thinking about outcomes and goals and aspirations and planning for them. Have you ever thought that us being made in the image of God, plans are an outworking of being created in his image because he's one who creates plans? And thirdly, while God has wired us to have plans, God wants to be part of those plans. Or another way to think about it is that God invites us to be involved in his plans. Which brings this big sense of certainty around the outcome or the success of those plans. Today, as we take another step forward to creating our church plan, I want you to adopt a spirit of confidence that what we are doing is partnering with God. That God is with us and through his spirit is empowering us, that we actually take confidence that our time and our effort is not wasted. I like Proverb 16.3 that said, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. I love that first part, commit to the Lord whatever you do. And so now I want us to commit to the Lord our time together seeking his guidance and wisdom. So let me pray. Lord, we do come and commit our efforts, our work, our thinking. We commit them into your hand. And Lord, we trust that your spirit is within us, your spirit is uniting us, not only together ourselves, but together with you. So Lord, empower us today with your spirit. And I just want, actually, I want everybody to do something symbolic. I would love you to just put your hands out in front of you and just, Pray a prayer that says, Lord, I commit what I do today to you. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, we don't necessarily need to see flames of fire falling on our heads. But Lord, it is so wonderful to know that through your spirit, our commitment to you is, Lord, we look forward in hope to the establishment of the plans, your plans for our church in the work we do today. Amen. I want to briefly describe what we're going to do. So just as a refresher, if you bring the next slide up, thanks, Nige. This is the big picture of what we're doing. We're, we're creating a plan for some what we see 
our church focusing on for the next three years. And we started off, if you remember, gathering together and we simply were asking ourselves, who are we? And imagining where we want to be. And we all sat down and post-it notes and everything went on the walls, yeah? And then having done that, we sat there and we grouped them together. The groupings and headings are over there on that wall. And then we sat there and we said, well, we can't do all of this, so where are we going to focus our um, attention? And we basically see there's three that kind of, that most of us, kind of, the majority of us would be the better word, have focused on. And that, and, and so we're moving to the next step today where we're going to get into groups and we're going to set some goals, maybe some sub goals, for that, each of those areas. And as you move along the thing, along the process plan there, you'll see the next step down the track is we're going to define the steps. We're actually going to kind of work out, okay, so these are the goals now, what are we going to do to reach the goals? And then we've got there deciding to commit. And so we'll look at what we've done, we'll look at what we're thinking of doing, and we'll commit. We'll sit there and, as a group from church and go, yep, we're in. And then we launch into action. And the last two steps are more about reviewing how we're going and checking what's happening. So that's our big picture. So today, if we get to the next one, I'm going to ask you to join one of the three areas. So we've got Sunday services and gatherings. That's one group. And this is everything to do with our Sunday services and how we get together. It, it encompasses everything from our welcoming, our praying, our singing, our music, our prayers, our preaching, our teaching, our community lunches, anything that sits in this bucket. The children, youth and families, this is a focus, as the, obviously as the title suggests, around all things surrounding children, youth and families, thinking about their engagement in the totality of the life of the church. And you obviously can see a bit of a crossover because there's, well, maybe there's Sunday services that have the involvement with children's family. Yes, there is. But there's this bigger picture. And it's all about focusing on, I think, the, the, the vision of the, sorry, the way to think about ch children, youth and families is about the focusing on their engagement in their faith growth through the journey. And then the third group is community outreach, and specifically around asylum seekers, refugees, isolated people, and homeless, and the homeless. And this group obviously focus, has a, an outward focus and thinking about how God is calling us to engage with those specific community groups. So maybe, and I've been saying obviously the last couple of weeks, hey, think about them, which one do you want to be part of? And, and I, interestingly, some people I know have got, they know exactly where they're going. And I've heard from others, they're not sure <laughs> where they're going. So. This is what I'd like you to do. We're going to break up and there's going to be three groups. Uh, the Sunday services and gatherings is going to remain in this room. The one in the middle in the foyer is the children's and families and the community outreach is right back of the hall. If you know where you're going, you can just go straight there. <laughs> if you don't know where you're going, if you haven't decided yet, or you, you basically say, I, I don't mind, I've got an interest in all three, I don't really mind, then have a look where the numbers are and just join the group that's the least. <laughs> okay, it's not rocket science. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let that. Um, so, okay, so we're clear on that part, that's what we're going to do. But this is what I would like you to really do when you get into your group. There's actually going to be a facilitator for each of the groups. 
And what I'm asking you to work together is to define an overall goal. I was going to say, you could define one overall goal or you could define some sub-goals. What I don't want to be is, I don't want everyone like having to stress out that we have to have one overall goal. But So if we had two, you don't want much more than three though. And if your group, by the way, I haven't said this to the facilitators, if your group has a dynamic where you basically end up with four or five sub-goals that we can't kind of agree with, I want you to write them all down and we'll bring it back to our ch to this community, maybe not today, and we'll pray about it and we'll sort it out together because that's the way we do it. But I, I, I suspect that may not happen anyway. The goals that we're looking for are not a list of outcomes. This is really important. I want it is help. So the goals are sorry. The goals are a list of outcomes. They're not a list of the things we're going to do to meet the outcome. And I'll give you an example. It's helpful to think of the goals as having a verb in it. And if you put up the next slide, thanks. Um, no, no, go back one. Back. Did it make it in? Can you go back? Oh, okay. It didn't make it in. Something's happening. Okay, let me give you an example. If we're talking about Sunday services and gatherings, this would be an example. These are just examples. I don't want you to fix on these. <laughs> but it could be implement new initiatives to engage young adults. That would be different. That would be a goal, right? Initiate new initiative to engage young adults. If you, but if someone said, I've got this great idea, why don't we start an evening service for young adults? That's the means to get to the goal. But if we start focusing there, the trap we fall into is we start thinking, hey, we have to start an evening service for the young adults. Whereas maybe if you had the other goal and you got discussion together, someone goes, you know what? It would be better if we met with the other churches in Mosaic and together formed up. So you, at this point in time, it's really important that we focus on the goal. If you've got a really good idea of something to do, the way what you do is you sit there and go, oh, this is my idea. What is the outcome I'm trying to get by doing that activity? And that'll help you frame up the goal. Yeah? So, so I'll just give you, implement new activities with, sorry, implement a new initiative for young adults. That would be an example for the Sunday services. For the children's families, it would be something like connect with more families not currently involved in the church. That would be a goal. Or provide some youth-centred activities. A goal without specifying the means. Community outreach might be, and this was a really good one, um, that uh, Rod and I were talking during the week, and Rod said this, and I went, oh, this is a great example of what a goal could be. Grow and expand the capacity of our church to provide accommodation for asylum seekers and refugees. See, the, the verb is grow and expand, or verbs. So, am I, is it, am I, am I have, this is getting clear. This is what we're going to do. Find some goals. All right. I'm going to stop now, but before I send you off, Elizabeth needs to explain some things for the kids. Okay, kids, listen up. Can't see you, but I assume you're all there. There you go. Thanks, Jadari. Um, we'd really value your contributions in the discussion areas, and you might like to choose where you go for yourselves. But if you're someone who needs something to do while we're talking, as well as listening, uh, you might like to take on the mega word search challenge for the day, which is a number of word searches that I've got here. Uh, you can, once you've done the word search, write down the verse. So you'll need to take a Bible with you to look up the verse and write it down. And if you do manage to do 
the mega word search, there may well be a killer reward at the end. So come and see me if that's the case. For those who like to colour, adults as well, while they're thinking and talking, there's also some colouring sheets. So I'll put them down the back. You'll need to take pens or textures with you when you join the group, and you might even like to take a clipboard to lean on because uh, not everyone's got a table, okay? One final instruction. I, I need to talk. So you guys are online. What's going to happen with you is we're going to open up breakout rooms and we're going to try something new today. We've actually set up computers in each of the groups. And so you're going to be actually participating in each of the groups. But what you'll need to do is when Nigel opens the breakout rooms, you'll see their name there. You need to pick and join one. And um, so again, you get, and then you'll see you'll be able to participate in the group in the, the actual groups with everyone else in the church. So we're going to try this brave new world of technology and um, we've already prayed that God's with us. So, okay, so away you go and we're going to have um, quite a bit of time to do it. This will take us through. We'll end up getting back together for communion. Okay. I like the word communion, I like it when we break it down and the idea of it being common union. We have common union in Jesus. Everything we've done today, no matter how, when you think of everything we've we, You've done this morning, all the conversations, all the thoughts, all the ideas, the one thing, the one thing that brings us common union is our faith, our belief, our relationship with Jesus. And I heard it in the different groups that, you know, that I heard a, a bit of a discussion around the, the community group that was talking about needing to share our faith with those outside. And I heard in uh, families and children, it was about growing the faith of the children and families. And in the worship team, it was exact, you were wrestling with the whole idea of maturity in faith while gathering in this space. Our common union is around Jesus and our relationship and our faith with him. Communion itself is meant to be one of those psychological triggers. When we eat the bread, when we drink the cup, we remember the death of our Lord Jesus until he comes again. And so I invite you now to come to the table and um, grab some grab, shocking word, Paul, um, take um, the juice and the bread and just go back and, and I'll pray over it, pray for us, and then we'll have to share for you. So come forward and help. On the night he was together with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it, gave them to the disciples and he said, take this, all of you, eat this in memory of me, my body broken for you. And then he prays later, prays God, thanks for the cup and then the cup said, this is the blood of the new covenant, the new agreement. 
I invite you now to eat and drink and pray, in praise for the common union we have in Jesus our Lord and Saviour. Amen. While we're standing, I want you to look to the person on your left or near you and I want you to pray for them. Mm. Look around to the person on your right and pray for them. Loving God, we thank you that we sit in common union with you in the family that you've created here in our church of West Preston Baptist. I pray, Lord, you would continue to bless us as we grow and serve each other and the people in the community around us. And we ask this in the power of your spirit, to be empowered by your spirit. Amen. What you do? Grab a seat and we'll just um, quickly hear from our groups. Uh, with the, so we've got the three group leaders out front here. Okay. Oh. Rod. Rod, this is from the Community Connection Group and their goal is through prayer and research, learn how, to, how we can connect to improve quality of life of marginalised people. Yeah, oh, cool. Through prayer and research, learn how, to, how we can connect to improve quality of life of marginalized people yes i think i've said it better that time great terrific do you want me to read it uh, we've got we were the group thinking about our sunday worship and also our more general gatherings and our first goal is to create environments and environment environments that we actually want to invite others into that draws on welcome and safe places and come as you are and all that sort of thing. But our second goal was to grow and deepen our connections with God and each other through our services and intentional gatherings. We know that's part of our vision statement. It seems it's the heart of what we want to do. We've got lots of ideas about how we could do that better. So that's our goal. We want to grow and deepen our connections. Well done. For the children, youth and families, we want to create an environment of belonging and the opportunity to experience a personal relationship with God for children, youth and families. Thanks, everybody. The, the, what I would love for you, I'd love to get feedback, hear from people what you think, what's happening, are you okay? Well, this is for the next couple of weeks, that's what we want to do. While we're stirred in this space, be stirred, but let's be talking and share what's happening. Okay, and I'm going to do our benediction and we're going to finish. I thought for our benediction today, Proverbs 3, 4 and 6, very apt. So this week, as you go out into your fa with your families, your friends, your neighbours, your work colleagues, with one another in this community, 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So thanks, everybody. Be blessed for those going off to family, uh, Father's Day things. Be blessed with your families. And for those that aren't, be blessed as well. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. So, thank you.